Hello everyone, welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Today's episode is about Etude in E flat major, opus 10, number 11. Chopin is opening a completely new musical world for us. Forgive me that I played the whole piece, but I love this music with all my heart. And it brings a lot of memories to me. So now I think, forgive me a little bit of personal story of my life, but since it's very important to me, um, I want to share it with you. Back in 2010, so almost 12 years ago, 11 years ago, I, I had a very um, strange year in 2010. Everything started from a huge success. I was so surprised that in January I won the first prize in the National Chopin piano competition in Warsaw. It's a cold, small Chopin, you know. All the Polish great pianists, young pianists, come to Warsaw and they compete. I won the first prize. This was the year that the big Chopin competition in Warsaw was to be held in October. It was so surprising. I got a lot of concerts and of course it was fantastic for me, fantastic. And uh, in April, I took part in the preliminaries of, to the big Chopin competition. That time, unfortunately, it was not like this last year or five years ago that the winner of the 
national Chopin competition was automatically accepted to the big competition. I had to play the preliminaries. And I played the preliminaries, and, and as you probably can guess, I played this masterpiece. It was my favorite piece. I loved it. I I felt like, you know, fish in the water, as we say. I loved it so much. I played Barcarolle as well that time. Revolutionary Etudes, so the next one. And, uh, and Nocturne, Opus 9, number 3. That was the program. I still remember. And I still remember the day, you know, just three days before my playing, we had a national tragedy in Poland. Maybe you remember, there was a day when an uh, airplane crashed in Russia with our president and his wife and all the great people, f f uh, you know, from, from, from the government, from, from the parliament and politicians and soldiers and everything. I mean, this was just a huge tragedy. Three days before, you know, and everybody in Poland was devastated because it was such a shock. And yet I had to play. And I remember I was walking, because I, I was living in Warsaw that time, I was walking to the Philharmonic Hall when, where uh, the preliminaries were held. And exactly in the moment when the coffin with the first lady, first, you know, the wife of president, the coffin with wife, with wife of president was just going from the airport in the main street and I was walking with this main street. There were thousands of people on the street waving uh, with our national flags and everybody was so shocked that the atmosphere was nothing comparing to playing the piano. But still I played and I thought I played well. I was very touched. I, I was thinking uh, about this tragedy when I was playing, but still, well, I played revolutionary attitude, so it was even more special. And then one month later, I couldn't find my name on the list to the main competition. And I couldn't believe it because, you know, I won the national competition. I played well. I fought well. Of course, I should. No, it was not me. I was not there. And nobody knew why. But that's, let's leave it. I got so depressed. I remember it took me a lot of time to get up. A lot of time. And I think every young pianist uh, has this experience. Uh, so it's the hardest experience for us. I never dreamt of winning Chopin competition, but I had the dream to perform in the main competition for this wonderful audience, at least one stage, to show my Chopin. It never happened. But I accepted that after many months I recovered. Um, and I'm here now with, with you, uh, performing for you this set. But what I want to say actually is that after these preliminaries I had never played this etude anymore in public. It brought too many bad emotions to me. Too many disappointment. Twelve years has passed and now I am doing this project and I think I recovered also because of all of you who listen to me, so, so many people, and you write your fantastic comments, usually enthusiastic, beautiful comments, and uh, you are encouraging me. I love it so much and it really makes me feel fantastic so i decided to play the whole etude for you to prove myself that i i'm finished with these bad emotions connected to this etude and now analysis okay what is this etude improving what is it improving a new technique we didn't have such a technique before. It's called arpeggio from Italian. Arpeggio means a broken chord. Usually when pianists have small hands, they break those chords. So instead of playing one chord, they play each note separately. 
when they play it very fast, well, we call it arpeggio. And, you know, it looks in the score, if you are not a musician, it might be funny for you, because it looks in the score like this. We have these lines, you know, uh, like worms, you know, and all the etude is like this. It's very special. Nobody before Chopin wrote something like this. Well, we had some ar arpeggio etudes maybe, but they were boring and absolutely not so poetic. So this is the main difficulty. Uh, I strongly recommend this etude to everybody who has stiff wrist. When the wrist of a pianist, and it's a quite a common problem, is not flexible, relaxed and moving, he or she will never play this etude well, I promise. Because just watch my hands. Just watch my hands. And you will see and observe my wrists. So this is the main problem of this attitude. Of course, not the only one. Another problem is that we actually have the melody in the fifth finger. So in the top we have the melody which we have to connect, we have to play legato, despite the fact that we have these broken chords, right? We have to sing the beautiful melody. Um, these chords sometimes are very wide, extremely wide for pianist. so it's not easy to play the correct note. It's very easy to play it dirty, very easy. And I, sometimes I wonder how Chopin himself played this etude. From everything I, I read about his way of playing, his way of playing pianissimo, his changes of colors. You know, for me this etude is like as if I'm in the, the field full of many beautiful flowers and each flower has a scent and I go and I feel these beautiful scents and there are so many of them they smell so beautifully and the smell is changing constantly um, and of course we cannot imagine anything else but harp, harp. you know this is just as if it's harp playing that's why I don't really understand why there is another etude, this one. Which is called Aeolian Harp, whereas I think this one should be called much, it's much better for this one to be called a Harp, a Aeolian Harp. But it's not me who decide the title. Definitely you know that it was not Chopin who titled his etudes, so Let's leave it to the English publisher who wanted to sell as many <laughs> and earn money on this. But anyway, let's do the analysis now. We have the melody. Of course, we have to practice only the melody first, to play it beautifully. Then we have to try to play everything soft and only the melody shining in the top. And now let's look how easily it is constructed. The first part. We have very short phrases, but very regular. The first phrase... And consequent phrase. And every 
everything is repeated. the key of love for Chopin. This is fantastic music. It sounds even more fantastic if it's played very slow and now I want to share with you because it's the only way in the possibility in the, in the whole internet that you can hear this etude playing very slow. So let's enjoy it. B. Part B consists on two parts. It consists of two parts. The first part is um, built, well I call it um, like a, we have a group of scythes. Well that's the correct English word I think. When we, you correct me if I'm wrong, but when we do like, you know, ah, like ah, oh, like this. This is a sigh, right? Sigh, I think. Uh, probably. So you know what I mean. This is like that, and it's presented in a few different keys, so in a few different colors. Let's listen to this. And now. we have something incredible. Chopin was smart. He thought, okay, we had the melody in the top, but in the top finger. But then if we have the broken chord, we can also make a melody in the middle. Why not? So here he constructs a dialogue. So if we had the B major, the key of love, that suddenly we are together with our love and we have a conversation. And the first voice is saying something in the middle voice. And the top is hidden and then the top voice is answering. Just listen how beautiful this is. An answer. And again the top voice. An answer. Recapitulation. 
And we have recapitulation. The first phrase. From here Chopin of course must be Chopin so he had to change something. So instead of finishing the second consequent phrase he is prolonging this phrase and adding a sequence of chromatic um, chromatic sequence going down let's say to reach the coda. Let's listen to this. <laughs> have in the coda. It's really amazing. Chopin loved so much the idea of dialogue that here he is adding, presenting it again one more time. So he is saying, she is answering. He is saying, and she is answering. And now the end. And a fantastic virtuoso ending of this etude. Thank you very much. Thanks for being with me. And now I have a surprise for you. I found a CD with my video recording, which I sent for the video preliminaries of Chopin Competition 2010. This was recorded exactly in December 2009, 12 years ago. So here you can watch me and listen to me 12 years younger playing this etude. After that time, well, I, as I told you, I didn't play this etude for 11 years and I relearned it specially for this project, which I'm very thankful for. Thank you very much and all the best.